Alléluia. Amen. 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 We are going to sing this one song. And then I will invite my brother to come forward. Let's sing one for two. Well 
May the Lord bless you all. We are really happy again to be in God's presence. Things are kind of changing every day as uh, we are seeing them and we are hearing on the news. So it looks like from now on our service will just be in this format and we just come two or three people and then do this live stream because uh, I received another video last night which was more clear including the churches they talk in that video about a large gathering that uh, they shouldn't be taking place if the Lord allows uh, after the service I will try to post that video as well uh, in the WhatsApp group that we have created for the church moving forward like for keeping everybody informed of everything which is happening right now and uh, just to make it clear as well this channel or this uh, facility we've created we have done this just to help ourselves brothers and sisters here in Leicester just to keep you informed of everything that is happening but we cannot completely switch off and not preach the word because while uh, this coronavirus is still going on we are still preparing ourselves for the return of the Lord and we should not lose sight on that if this situation is to last for one month, two, six, one year or two years and the ban is not lifted up so we will still continue gathering in this way but we hope uh, the Lord will inspire with the scientists to come up with uh, a way of uh, dealing with it but whichever way uh, we know God will always lead and we will get over it so for now if we can where well, we can stand but I know who you are in your homes we will just consider reading Psalm 107 that we've been reading recently Psalm 107 I will read from verse 1 Psalm 107 which reads Oh give thanks unto the Lord for he is good for his mercy endureth forever let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he has redeemed from the hand of the enemy, and gathered them out of the lands from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. They wandered in the wilderness, and he delivered them out of their distresses, and he laid them forth by the right way, that they might go to a city of habitation. Amen. Amen. Let us all pray. Our Heavenly Father, we are so grateful unto you for this time that you've given us again in thy presence. We are living in different times where we can see things changing so fast. But you remain God. Us as human can be surprised, but you are not. For you know the end of everything from the beginning. Therefore, Lord, help our brothers and sisters, wherever they are right now. Keep them and give the strength Grant the grace, Lord, for each to have time to read, to pray. Meditate upon your word day and night, as you said to Josh, so that, Lord, we can all be successful. And this time, Lord, let it come and go in a way that we can draw some lessons, we can learn something from you. For now we can see how important it is to come together and gather around your word. Lord, bless us all and answer to all our petitions, for we ask in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Right, so we've been talking about the redemption recently and briefly moving forward because the way things are going, our service will be becoming more and more a little bit shorter, but we'll try to bring little topics that will be straightforward just to help ourselves while we are at our place in our homes we can go through them and meditate upon them 
And when we were reading the word, we've kind of looked into different aspects. We talked about the redemption by blood. We spoke about the redemption through or by power and total redemption. And this word redemption itself is like you are buying back something that belonged to you. And talking about redemption, we looked at Ruth and Naomi and Orpah. We briefly spoke about uh, what happened to Ruth and also to Naomi, who was the mother-in-law, who had gone into Moab and we saw what happened. But already in the law, there is something that God spoke in the book of Leviticus that I want us a little bit to spend time and just consider it uh, a little bit in Leviticus 25. We read here something that God had said concerning the law of redemption. And in Leviticus 25, we read from verse 23. Here, the Lord is saying something important. He says here, The land shall not be sold forever, for the land is mine. For ye are strangers, and sojourners with me. And in all the land of your possessions, ye shall grant a redemption for the land. If thy brother be waxen poor, and has sold away some of his possession, and if any of his kin come to redeem it, then shall he redeem that which his brother sold. And if the man have none to redeem it, and in himself be able to redeem it, then let him count the years of the sale thereof, and restore the overplus unto the man to whom he sold it, that he may return unto his possession. But if he be not able to restore it to him, then that which is sold shall remain in the hand of him that has bought it until the year of Jubilee. And in the Jubilee it shall go out and it shall return unto his possession. Amen. Amen. If you notice one thing there, the Lord speaking here regarding the redemption of the land, he gave means by which the land which was sold could be redeemed. He first shows us that the land could not be sold forever because the land belonged to God. And then he goes on saying that, verse 25, if thy brother be waxen poor and has sold away his possession, his kin or next of kin can come and redeem the land which he has sold. But if himself is able to redeem it, he will then go and redeem it. And the third way that he said, if the man is unable to redeem it or he has no one else to redeem it, then that property could be redeemed or that land could be uh, redeemed during the time of Jubilee. So these were the three ways by which the land could be redeemed. So then we also see in verse 47, but this time it's not about the redemption of the land, but this time it was the redemption of the Israelites. It says, verse 47, And if a sojourner or stranger was rich by thee, and thy brother that dwelleth by him was poor, and sell himself unto the stranger or sojourner by thee, or to the stock of the stranger's family, after that he is sold, he may be redeemed again. One of his brethren may redeem him, either his uncle or his uncle's son may redeem him, or any that is nigh of kin unto him of his family may redeem him, or if he be able, he may redeem himself. And if he shall reckon with him that bought him from the year that he was sold to him unto the year of Jubilee, and the price of his sale shall be according unto the number of years, according to the time of an hired servant shall it be with him.
him. But if you notice there also, the same rule seems to apply. So when somebody becomes poor and sells himself, there were also three ways by which he could be redeemed. He could redeem himself or his next of kin could redeem him or he could wait up until the day or the time of jubilee. So there are three ways there of redemption. So the first is either if you have the means you could redeem yourself. The second means your next of kin could redeem you. And the third was to wait up until the time of jubilee. So the time of jubilee, we can refer to it like the time of grace. So the time of jubilee, when that jubilee time comes, slaves or people who were sold, they used to go free. And all of this because God had already put it in his law. And Israelites could not be sold forever. The land could not also be sold forever. So he then planned in that work so that land could be redeemed and people also could be redeemed. So as we heard recently that in all of these ordinances and in all of these commandments or laws that God gave, it was only a shadow of things to come. So in the New Testament, all these things as we are reading them in the Old, they still have a very significant meaning in the New Testament. So that's why when we talk about the redemption, it's a subject that should always make us all think what it is all about. So, but here first we are seeing the redemption in practice. We see the redemption, how it was happening with Israel. We saw how Ruth had to be redeemed. But how did it happen? If you go quickly with me again in the book of Ruth, you can see there what actually happened. In the book of Ruth, we read... Ruth. If you pick quickly chapter 4 of Ruth, Ruth chapter 4, Ruth, pardon me, chapter 4 from verse 3 we read, and he said unto the king's man, Naomi that has come again out of the country of Moab selleth a parcel of land, which was our brother Elimelech's. And I thought to advertise thee, saying, Buy it before the inhabitant and before the elders of my people. If thou wilt redeem it, redeem it. But if thou wilt not redeem it, then tell me that I may know, for there is none to redeem it beside thee, and I am after thee. And he said, I will redeem it. Then said Boaz, What day thou buyest the field of the hand of Naomi, thou must buy it also of Ruth the Moabite, the wife of the dead, to raise up the name of the dead upon his inheritance. So here we are seeing into the redemption of the land. And also in Israel there was already a law that said when a brother dies and leaves a widow without a child, his brother could marry that woman and raise a seed because the one who died did not leave a child. Now it happened. Please read again the book of Ruth to have the context because I want to apply this also to the New Testament. So if you read in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 25, from verse 5 to 10, you will see how that law used to work. So when a brother dies without leaving a seed, meaning without leaving children, his younger brother would go and marry that woman and then raise or bring children around. So now it happened that Naomi, or Naomi sold the land and then her two children who had married Orpah and, and Ruth did not leave children. Now the two laws had to be applied, meaning 
whoever will redeem the land that Naomi sold automatically, he had also to take Ruth in order to fulfill what the scripture said in Deuteronomy, if I can quickly go to Deuteronomy 25. Deuteronomy 25, it read, Deuteronomy 25, from verse 5, it says, If brethren dwell together, and one of them die, and have no child, the wife of the dead shall not marry without unto a stranger. Her husband's brother shall go in unto her, and take her to him, to wife, and perform the duty of an husband's brother unto her. And it shall be that the firstborn which she beareth shall succeed in the name of his brother which is dead, that his name be not put out of Israel. And if the man like not to take his brother's wife, then let his brother's wife go up to the gate unto the elders and say, My husband's brother refused to raise up unto his brother and them in Israel. He will not perform the duty of my husband's brother. Then the elders of his city shall call him and speak unto him. And if he stand to it and say, I like not to take her, then shall his brother's wife come unto him in the presence of the elders and loose his shoe from off his foot and spit in his face and shall answer and say, So shall it be done unto that man that will not build up his brother's house, and his name shall be called in Israel, the house of him that has his shoe loosed. And if you read this story and what we are reading here concerning the duty of a husband's brother and what happened with Ruth, you will see that it happened exactly the same. So the one who was the next of kin who was meant to go and redeem the land that Naomi sold, and also take Ruth as a wife, that man refused. And because Boaz was the next, after that man, Boaz was the next, as soon as he refused in Ruth chapter 4, then Boaz went, redeemed the land, and automatically took Ruth for wife. Now, this is what happened with Ruth, and Ruth was rewarded and everything. So we see she lost, first Naomi lost the two sons, she lost her husband, and then she found herself a widow, she traveled back with Ruth, and later on she realized she had sold the land, and yet the land in Israel, according to Leviticus 25, lands were not meant to be sold forever. So if you remember also the story of Naboth, when Ahab said to Naboth to sell him a, a land, Naboth refused because Naboth thought that the uncle could redeem uh, the uncle could redeem the land and so on. So it had to be a relative. It had to be the next of kin. Your friend is not your next of kin, but it has to be someone from your family, as we read it here in Ruth chapter 4 and now when men died because here we can look at Ruth and say the only thing that Ruth sold or Naomi sold was the land but at the same time she lost her husband she lost the the two sons so Naomi was a loser but for you and I as believers of the New Testament after the fall of man in the Garden of Eden, we realize that men lost the fellowship with God. Men lost that closeness he had with God. Men lost his youth. Men became mortal. Men became weak. Men started falling ill. And men became powerless, as we can see it right now. Men has become a fugitive, as we have read in Psalm 107. Men became a wanderer going here and there, living a lonely life. Why? Because men had fallen in sin. So how could men go back in the state in which he was before? How could men go back 
to God and have again the fellowship as he used to have it before. Things were no longer the same because men had fallen in the body of flesh and sin, and he was now separated from God. Death had a claim upon men. Satan had a claim upon men. So Satan could now rule over men in a way that God could not tolerate. So what has then God done? We all know, as the book of John 4 tells us, that God is a spirit, and as a spirit you of your family. But God in that spiritual form, he was not one of us. He could not come and die for us because men sinned in the body of flesh. And for the redemption of man, God had to come in the same form as men sinned. That's why this scripture of Leviticus 17 is very crucial. Each time we read, we should always remember, Leviticus happened in the body of flesh. Men inherited the sinful nature of the devil. Men, no. A woman does not have a seed of her own. A woman is only a carrier of the seed. So that's why when we read in the book of, in the Psalm chapter 2, they, we start seeing now how God started announcing again more and more of what would happen. In Psalm chapter 2, we read from verse 7, I declare the decree, the Lord has said unto me, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. Amen. Ask of me, and I shall give thee the hidden for thy inheritance, and the uttermost part of the earth for thy possession. Don't forget and lose sight, brethren. In the same way that Naomi sold the land, in the same way that Ruth needed somebody to come and raise up the seed for the husband who had passed, God, throughout the Old Testament, there was a search of the kinsman redeemer who was worthy, who was the closest to go and redeem man and bring him in the state in which he was before. Who will go and then buy back what men are sold? So throughout the Old Testament, the main search was not of a man who will come maybe and build the country. No. The main search was to find the kinsman redeemer. Someone who was worthy. Somebody who would be fit to then go and redeem men and everything that the man sold. Because remember, Naomi sold the land only. But you and me, we were sold to sin. As we read in Isaiah 52, the scripture tells us in Isaiah 52, we read here, Isaiah 52, it read from verse 3. For thus saith the Lord, ye have sold yourselves for naught, and ye shall be redeemed without money. Because remember, men, we all know, Eve was deceived. The devil came with his cunning ways and deceived Eve. And then suddenly, Adam fell into the trap. And the sinful nature came upon them. But they were unable to redeem themselves. They were unable to bring themselves in the state in which they were, where they could easily have fellowship with God. They all started running away from the presence of God. So now the prophets in the Old Testament, they were now under the leadership of God and the inspiration of God. They were all now announcing the coming of the Messiah. That Messiah was now to come as the kinsman redeemer. The one who would come in order to buy back all that men sold, all that men lost. So that's why in the New Testament, when you understand what actually happened in the Garden of Eden, when you understand exactly what men lost, then you will see why, why the virgin birth was needed. It's because 
there was no one that was worthy to go and redeem man. So, as we read in God's word, if you go with me, here we read in Psalm, Psalm tells us here in chapter 2, verse 7, I will declare the decree, the Lord has said unto me, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. This was only an announcement, mm. an announcement of the son who was going to be born in the New Testament. But already the announcement was given, saying, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. Meaning, the son who will be born will be the seed of God. In Genesis, we are told of the seed of the woman, but actually, the son who will be born, that son will be the actual seed of God himself. That's why when you read in the book of John 16, from verse 26, you read John 8, 42, John 16, and so on. The Lord used to say, because you've all believed that I came out of God. Why? Because out of God can only come God himself. So, but Adam did not come out of God. Adam was created. But this son is the only begotten son of God. The only one that came out of God. And therefore, him alone, he had the divine nature because he came out of God. But Adam was created from the dust. But the son here is the only one. So the image of God himself, not in the image, but Adam is the one who was created in the image of God. But the son here is the actual image. So therefore, we now read in the New Testament. We can pick that up quickly. So we've said that God is a spirit. As a spirit, God cannot die. Therefore, he needed to be one of us. So we read first in Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 2, it's written here from verse 7. It says, And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. But prior to that, if we pick first John 1, I just want us first to read John 1 verse 14 to see how important it is that he had to come first in the flesh. John 1 tells us from verse 1, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Verse 7, sorry, verse 14, And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So, in short, because we are in search of the kinsman redeemer, God is a spirit. As a spirit, we, are, we do not have the same nature. Men fell in the body of flesh. For God to come and redeem us, we are being told, the word became flesh. So by that now we are seeing that the redemption for mankind, our redemption, is not an angel that came to redeem us. It's not a prophet that came to redeem us, but actually it's God himself. But how did he do it? The word that was in the beginning, now we are being told that that word became flesh. So brethren, in short, when you read in the word, God first to become the kinsman, redeemer, he had to become man. But how did it happen? Now we start reading, as we have read, how Mary gave birth to that child. And then in Luke 2 again, we read Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 2. It's written here. Verse 11, it says, For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior which is Christ the Lord. And many other passages. So first, 
he had to be born. And we all know, because the kinsman redeemer, the kinsman redeemer, he has to be like us. He has to be like us. And we, and we, as the way we come in this earth, all of us, we come by the natural birth. That's how we come in this earth. But unfortunately, after the fall of man, after the fall of man, our natural birth was the result of unbelief and disobedience of Adam. It's because Adam disobeyed, he transgressed what God has given him as a commandment. And because of that, our natural birth was the outcome of unbelief and disobedience. And with the natural birth came death as well. And not only death, and we can also see that through the unbelief, there was also a separation. So we were born straight in sin, and death had dominion over us. So there was no way we could escape. So because we came through a natural birth from a woman, God also, in order to help you, in order to come and redeem or be your kinsman, redeemer, we see him also in the book of Luke there, that when he came down, when he came, him also, he came through a woman. Our Lord was born, as we have read it in Luke chapter 2 from verse 7 there, and she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in a swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. So our Lord, first we read in John 1, the word became flesh. But how that did that word become flesh? We then read that actually an angel visited Mary, spoke to Mary, Mary believed. Then the Holy Ghost came upon Mary, overshadowed her, and she gave birth to a son. And that son, when he was born, we will pick that up later on. But first, we can see that his birth was exactly like our birth. But the only difference is he was the only begotten son of God. He was the seed of God. He was not the seed of Adam, I mean of Joseph, but rather the seed of God because the Redeemer, if you go back to Leviticus 25, the Redeemer needed to have means. He needed to have the means to be able to redeem you. So your kinsman Redeemer needed to have something you, you don't have. Because of those three ways of redemption that God gave in the old, one of them either redeem yourself, the secondly, let your kinsmen come and redeem you, and the third, you need to wait up until the day of Jubilee. So, but when reading, when you have sold yourself because you are poor, it means you are not able to go and redeem yourself. And if you read in Psalm 49, there we are told the salvation or redemption of the soul was too expensive. Nobody could afford it. So that's why we needed the kinsman redeemer. But for that kinsman redeemer to come and redeem us, he needed now to be able to do so. And when we see where man was, brother, there was no way to redeem himself because of us we were born already <laughs> subject to all the works of the enemy we were born in sin conceived in iniquity and nobody was able to even go and help someone else so then we hear about the virgin birth why was she why did she conceive as a virgin it because the kinsman redeemer that was to come and redeem man, he had to be not subject to any of these uh, things at all, but rather be able to 
go and then overcome them. But as we know, God as a spirit, he could not come and die because what was required was the death of someone. But in order to die, that's why God had to become man. And as soon as he came in that body, that body in itself made it possible because of the mortality. He had to go and die. And who died for us? Was it God? As the brother put a question somewhere, who died for us? Was it God who died? And yet we know God is immortal. God cannot die. Amen. But rather the one who died was our Lord Jesus Christ. So he died in order to redeem us from sin and so on. So, But first let's just consider to see that our Lord was exactly human, just like you and me. So as human, he was born. So our Lord was born in Bethlehem. Our Lord was not born in heaven, but rather the Lord was born in Bethlehem. His name was given, the name given to him was Jesus. So we read in Luke 2 again, Luke chapter 2, we read verse 21, it says, Luke chapter 2 verse 21, it says, And when eight days were accomplished, for the circumcision, for the circumcising of the child, his name was called Jesus, which was so named of the angel before he was conceived in the womb. And when the days of purification, according to the law of Moses, were accomplished, they brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, as it is written in the law. Of the Lord, every male that opened the womb shall be called holy to the Lord. So here we see that after eight days he was consecrated. Not only that, he was also circumcised. So when we read in the word things that we do, he was also given a name exactly. Things that we do when your wife gives birth, the first thing you do, you give your child a name. When your wife gives birth, you, brother or sister, you all come here and then you consecrate your child. And then the child gets prayed for. You can find it in Mark 13. So our Lord also, when he was born, he was taken to the temple, they prayed for him. And then he, after eight days, he was circumcised. Exactly what we will do. Why? Because remember, the kinsman redeemer had to be 100% a person, a human being, a man. He had to be. Why did he have to do that? Because for him to be able to redeem you. So we see with Ruth, they sold the land. As soon as Boaz came, it turns out that Boaz was the kinsman. He was of the family. Now here, God. <laughs> Look, God is, God is invisible. God is a spirit. He lived by himself in eternity. And then he came out of that eternity at the beginning. He created. After the creation, Adam started living a normal life. But as soon as Adam fell in sin, God had to live now that essence of spirit to come now and enter into the creation and by entering into the creation become like men, live like men, do everything exactly like men in order to be able to redeem men from all these powers, from death, hell, and the powers of Satan. So that's why he gave already a promise in Genesis 3 the seed of the woman would come. And when that happened, Mary conceived and gave birth. And then in Hebrew 10, we are told, sacrifice or holocaust, he didn't want, but rather, you made me a body. For which reason? To come and do God's will. But brothers, as we are reading, let's pick a few verses here and there, and then we'll be finishing quickly. In Matthew 1, so we see a name was given to him. He was circumcised. He was consecrated. And then in Matthew chapter 1, we read Matthew 1. 
Matthew 1, verse 21, we are told, And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from sins. And we've read here also the same, but it, at the same time, if you remember what we just read earlier, it says that Mary gave birth. It was uh, from verse in Luke 2 that we read, verse 7, it says here, And she brought forth a firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes. Why was he the firstborn? Because remember, Mary later had other children with Joseph. So even in the, when she, Mary gave birth, so he was the firstborn in the natural of all her children. So that's how it is written. Now, if you move on with me, we start looking again into other aspects. We see God as a spirit. He cannot suffer. God as a spirit, he cannot die. And yet, you and me, we do sleep. We do die. So in all of those, it's giving us an understanding as of why he had to become flesh. Why did God decide to come in this earth and take a human body? First, to remember for the redemption, these are things that had more dominion and power over us, human. And God had to come and deal with these. If you read with me just a few more verses again in Hebrew chapter 2. Hebrew chapter 2, Hebrew chapter 2, we read from verse 17, it says, Hebrew chapter 2, verse 17, Wherefore, in all things it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. For in that he himself has suffered, being tempted, he is able to secure, to secure them that are tempted. So as you can see there, so I can read that last part. He is able to help them that are tempted. Why? Because he became exactly like a man. In 100% a man. Because he became a man, now he is able to help you and to help me. So the only one who can understand you and understand me is the Lord himself. Why? Because he became you so that through the price and what he did on Calvary, we can become him. So that's why he was the only one that was worthy. If you read John 13, there, <laughs> rather than going to John 13, Mark, rather, Mark 13, we are told how Jesus went, or Mark 11, rather, Mark 11, Jesus went to a fig tree because he was hungry. He wanted to go and take a fig, and there was nothing on the tree. He then cursed the tree. You read in John 4, the Lord spoke to the Samaritan woman. Woman, give me water to drink. Why? Because he was human. He was drinking. He was also hungry, just like human. And if you read again in Mark chapter 4, from verse 38, he slept on the boat. I'll quickly read that Mark 4. Mark chapter 4, Mark chapter 4, from verse, verse, verse uh, 37. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow, and they awake him, say, unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? 
And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? And they feared exceedingly, and said one to another, What manner of men is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? In short, he was a man. They wondered what manner of a man is he. But brethren, he was 100% a man, but at the same time, the fullness of God dwelt the body in him. There were things he was doing as a man. So there were things also as God he had to do. But here we are seeing first that the kinsman redeemer had to be a man. He could be tired and then he could sleep. He could be hungry and wanted also food. He could be thirsty and wanted also water. Exactly things that we all go through as human beings. So our Lord took part in all of those. He wept when he heard that Lazarus died. Why? Because he was human in everything in order first to be our kinsman redeemer. To be able so that he could help us as Hebrew 2 says, when we are tempted, then he will be able to help us. So now that he has fulfilled all of those, then came the day when he had to go now and face the enemy of man, death. And we all know that. When men sinned, death came on earth. Sin entered. Romans 5 tells us that. And man could not go and redeem himself. Then we read Isaiah 35. We are told how a Savior will come and so on. So that's how our Lord himself came in his body. He had to die on the cross. But the one who died, as we say, it needed the body in order to die. So our Lord died on the cross. I forgot, I wish I had the something that I'm prepared to read, but I can read it even next time. But in the spirit, he went in the lowest region where he conquered hell and conquered also Satan with all his powers so that he could now give back that victory to mankind. So that's why it is so important for us first to know that what men lost through Adam in Jesus Christ, God has redeemed all of that. And by believing in the Lord, brother, we are being placed back in the position in which we were. But it's only our bodies that are waiting to be redeemed. But our souls are already redeemed. So by God's grace, we are now waiting for that final enemy of man, death, to also completely lose the, the power that it's still having or this influence it's still having. But brothers and sisters, you can be reassured that what we lost in Adam through Jesus Christ, that was redeemed. And today, by God's grace, we can serve God in a way that without fear, because through the work of Calvary, we are becoming partakers of the divine nature. So we are going to stop here. And if the Lord allows, as I said from the beginning, this new way of gathering, we will do this. I will tackle all the topics that matters. I will go back again from the beginning to just see God's plan in its fullness. Look at Godhead. Look at the plan of salvation in its fullness. Just make a little bit of shorter services, but at least that answers key questions. And I'm sure and I do believe that will help us a lot. But for today, always believe that our Lord in 100% he was a man. At the same time, 100% the Lord himself was God. So he had to come and die in that body of flesh. I can read you this one probably, and then we will stop there. This was a question that was asked 
This was a question that was asked to Brother Frank once, and then he gave an answer on that. I'm sure I should be able to find it. He said somewhere. He says this. Some people also argue who died, asking who died on the cross. And then he said, Some say that God died. He then said, God is immortal. God cannot die. If God had died, we would not have been here today. God cannot die because God is the Spirit. He is the eternal Spirit. He then asked, who died? Jesus Christ died. Amen. So, brothers and sisters, I will come back again on this area. When we say Jesus Christ died, what do we mean? <coughs> so we mean Jesus Christ is not God. No, we don't mean that. Remember, Jesus Christ is the image of God. is the visible manifestation of the invisible God. And each time God manifests himself, we call him Lord. And Peter, on the day of Pentecost, say, This Jesus that you have crucified, God has made him Lord and Christ. Why? Because I always like to refer to that and read it so that it's in Act chapter 2. And then we'll end there. Acts chapter 2 from verse 36, if I'm not mistaken, it says, Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God, Elohim, has made that same Jesus whom ye have crucified, Lord and Christ. Why? The anointed one, Christ, as we can see, him in his humanity. He was exactly like you and me. He could sleep, he could walk. But why? So that he could redeem you. So the virgin birth in itself was the biggest miracle to allow man to have that kinsman, redeemer who could come and overcome death, hell, and Satan with all the demons. So today we can come and experience redemption through the blood that was shed because God as a spirit, he could not share his blood. So God had to take a body of flesh because sin happened in the body of flesh. So today, when you are sick, remember the price that was paid on Calvary, that price was also for the healing of your bodies. Mm -hmm. And when you believe, remember the one who died for you on the cross is the Lord Jesus Christ. So that's why when we are baptizing, the baptism in itself is to is to you are trying to how will i put it uh, so you are putting on in you are aligning yourself as our lord suffered and died because remember it's the lord who suffered and died you also you are resembling him in accepting to suffer and to die so that as he death, you also can we go and become like the same plant as Romans 6 says it, we become the same plant with the Lord as we find it in Romans 6 there. They use the word, and let me read verse 3. Know ye not so many of us as we're baptized into Jesus Christ, we're baptized into his death. Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of, the, of his death, we shall also in the likeness of his resurrection. So it's like we are becoming the same, the same. We are joining to each other through not only the water baptism, but also the baptism of the Holy Spirit. That's where the real union takes place. So that's why it's important for us to know who died for me. The Lord Jesus died for me. Now, him in his body of flesh, 
he died. He was even baptized before all of that. So when I believe the word through the obedience, I need also to go and get baptized because him in his body of flesh, he accepted to be baptized. So therefore, we also need to do so. May the Lord bless you richly. Amen. And if it is God's will again, we will continue. Our services will still be like this. We will be sending you a link each time in our group WhatsApp and then I will come. If this hall is still open, I will still try to continue coming here and preach from here and then you can watch the service as it is. So we can all pray as we are led and will close for today. Let us all pray first and then I will close in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we are so grateful unto you for this time that you've given us. Come, gather in this way. Bless each brother and sister. Help, Lord, those who are at home, connected, because they could not make it here due to the new restrictions. But Lord, our prayer is for you to keep each and every one open our spiritual understanding to see and realize how important it was to have a kinsman redeemer and you became one who came and took our place pay the price that no man would pay be blessed be glorified once again if there are anyone who's sick lord you remember them you the great physician if there is anyone lord who is still not yet convinced of their own sin, oh God, you are not doing. Speak to them and convince them. Grant it, Lord, and help us as well. And continue teaching us in such a way that all that we do, glory and honor, can be given unto you. Lord, we ask in Jesus' trust. Our Heavenly Father, we humbly come once again to say thank you for this time that you've given us in thy presence. We say thank you for thy presence. Truly, we've been blessed and we commit ourselves to you. Help us, Lord. Open our spiritual understanding. Let your word become truly light unto our feet in a way that, Lord, we can walk, we can see, we can understand that truly you pay the price. You died on the cross, overcame death, hell, and Satan with all its power so that we can serve you freely. Help us, Lord. If there are people who have not yet believed, speak to them. Open their understanding, Lord. For we know the enemy tries by all means to distance your children from you. But, Lord, help them and bless them. Keep them till we all meet again. For we ask in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. 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 May the Lord bless each and every one. Amen.